Howdy everyone, I'm Patty Lathan. My role here is mostly to see cases along with our interns and our residents and our students and to teach the students and um, my primary interest is internal medicine and very specifically I love endocrinology. My background is I actually grew up in Texas. I went to high school in Texas, then I went to Texas A&M University for undergrad. Then I went to veterinary school at University of Pennsylvania up in Philadelphia. And then when I was finishing veterinary school, I wasn't sure quite what I wanted to do. I thought I liked internal medicine, but I wanted to make sure that I had a pretty good broad um, background. So I was in private practice for a year in the Poconos of Pennsylvania. I learned very quickly that I loved endocrinology. I love diabetic patients. I love dogs with diabetic acidosis, which is a very bad condition, a very sick condition when dogs have diabetes as well. And I decided that I wanted to be an internist and specifically um, specialize in endocrinology even a little bit more. So then I did an internship actually down here at Mississippi State. And then I went and I did a residency in internal medicine at Purdue in Indiana. So generally after vet school, most people that become interns will do a one-year inter uh, internship. And during that internship, the intern rotates through all different parts of a hospital. So internal medicine, surgery, radiology, anesthesia, ICU and emergency and critical care, um, all of those different sections. And part of that is training them to become better vets and they get a lot of mentorship during that. But the other part of that is trying to figure out what interns um, want to do with their future. So sometimes during the internship, they'll decide, hey, I thought I wanted to be a surgeon, but no, actually I want to be an internist. Or I thought I wanted to be a radiologist, but no, I actually want to be a surgeon. So that's an internship. And after that one year of internship, you go on to do a three-year residency. And that's where you have specialized trainings. And in veterinary medicine, residencies are three years. And you can do surgery, medicine, pretty much every specialty in, in human medicine we have in veterinary medicine. Internal medicine is basically where we treat problems with animals that are on the inside of animals. So when you think about the liver, you think about the kidneys, you think about diseases like diabetes or um, thyroid disease or urinary disease like affecting the bladder, we diagnose problems in animals. So if a patient comes in for vomiting and diarrhea, especially if it's been happening for a long time, we do diagnosis trying to figure out why they have vomiting and diarrhea. I think I left out gastrointestinal disease as one of the parts of internal medicine, but that's a huge part of it. What we do is we look at the patient, we figure out the major problems the patient has, so vomiting, diarrhea, low red blood cell count, which is anemia, um, stuff like that, and then we try to figure out a diagnosis. Once we come up with a diagnosis, which can sometimes take quite a while, our goal is to treat the patient. Kidneys are what makes urine, and the kidneys make urine, and then the urine is stored into the bladder. So after the kidneys make urine, there are things called ureters that come down and they empty into the bladder, where um, basically the, ur the kidneys urinate, or they, sorry, they release the urine in to the ureters, these are ureters, and it's a kidney, and then it fills up the bladder. Now there's a sphincter here at the bottom of the bladder, so this is the urethra which goes out the dog and urine goes that way and they urinate. So make urine and kidney, it goes down the ureters into the bladder, and it stays in the bladder because there's this sphincter here called the internal urethral sphincter which it stays closed and keeps it in the bladder up here. In a normal dog, again, the ureters empty here in the bladder. Now, there are some dogs that are born with a congenital defect where instead of the ureters emptying to the bladder, it's called ectopic ureters, and they actually empty into the urethra. So there, you can see that if the, if the ureters, ureters empty into the urethra, 
that's past the bladder and the internal urethral sphincter and it lets urine go in there and then the urine just comes out into the urethra and they leak constantly. So Dr. Margarucci, he's a resident. He's in the bladder and looking around to make sure there's not anything abnormal there. So this is the scope we're going to use to go into the vulva, which is going to go into the urethra. This is the part that kind of sees. It's going to be connected to a camera. And I'm going to put this in there. There's going to be fluid going through. And then on that screen over there with the colored lines, we're going to get to see what's coming out of this end. So that way we're going to see the inside of the urethra and we're hopefully going to see the ureters that are emptying into the urethra and tell us where we need a laser to open them up into the bladder. So after we find where we're going, we're gonna put the laser down there and then I'm gonna be able to direct it so we know what tissue to laser into. So she doesn't have ectopic ureters um, and she's intact right now. So she doesn't technically have spay incontinence, but she still has some form of incontinence. One part of it is that she has a bladder that is in her, it's further back than it's supposed to be, which means that there's a different differential in pressures in the abdomen versus the pelvis. So um, she has a little bit more pressure on her uh, whole bladder which is making her feel like she has to pee all the time probably. So a couple things we can do is we can try and make it so the urethral sphincter, so the muscle tissue that keeps the urine from coming out of the bladder, we can try and make that a little bit tighter and there's a drug we can give called phenylpropanolamine and that will just make it so um, it'll activate the receptors on that muscle and make it basically the sphincter switch close a little bit more. The other thing we can do if that doesn't work is we can inject some collagen into the urethra, which you know is that tube, and it will basically just bulk it up and make it so it's closed more. It's not as open as that, it's like this, so urine doesn't come out as easily. <laughs> 